Ladybird Deeds. Hi, I'm Darren Finley of The Probate Pro, and we're going to cover the ins and outs of Ladybird Deeds in Michigan, how they can be an effective estate planning tool, and I'm actually going to show you line by line how this document works so that if you're interested in creating a Ladybird Deed, you'll have all the tools to get it done. A ladybird deed is representative of a particular type of conveyance, an enhanced life estate transfer. It can be in the form of a quitclaim deed in which the grantor conveys to the grantee with no warranties or a warranty deed in which there are warranties. What's really important to understand is that a ladybird deed is designed and created for the particular set of circumstances. You should work with an experienced, skilled, competent probate estate planning lawyer when drafting and dealing with these documents, because by doing it incorrectly, you can create all sorts of messes. In the basic ladybird transfer, the grantor retains a life estate and the power to sub subsequently convey the fee, which is the interest in the real estate, the whole interest. The power is generally expanded to include the power during lifetime to gift, to mortgage, to lease, and to otherwise dispose of the property. It's really an effective estate planning tool if used correctly to avoid probate, the probate administration process through the probate court. It's also approved by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. It can be used to avoid a divestment. It can be used so it's a non-countable asset if it's a homestead. And it's really an effective document. But again, I can only uh, overstate here as best I can that doing it right to make sure that you don't cause any difficulties with Medicaid or divestment, you should work with a skilled, competent, experienced probate practitioner. The Ladybird Deed can be a particularly useful and effective estate planning tool under certain circumstances. Let's address and analyze one particular common example. Somebody is currently receiving, receiving nursing home care or contemplating to receive nursing home care and they own a house. And it is intended to convey to a family member post-death. You can use a ladybird deed while somebody is receiving Medicaid and it will allow for the preservation of the residence as an exempt asset under the Medicaid eligibility rules. So there's no divestment and it's an inheritable asset to the beneficiary that would avoid the Estate Recovery Act under the Medicaid rules. Very powerful, important consideration. In addition, we also understand that there are uncapping rules that relate in real estate when person A gives to person or deeds to person B or sells to person B. Now, without going through all the rules relating to Michigan's current uh, real estate property tax law, if the default beneficiary is a close relative as defined under the Michigan statute, property taxes will not be uncapped at the time of the owner's death. So again, effective estate planning tool can avoid Medicaid eligibility concerns, can avoid the Estate Recovery Act under Medicaid, and if done properly, can avoid the uncapping of the property for property tax purposes. Now there are some limitations of a Lady Bird deed. It's not the preferred method in all scenarios. We often would prefer to do more extensive planning through the use of a will and trust to give us a lot more flexibility. It may not be effective also if there's a sizable unpaid lien as it relates to the real estate. In addition, if you give to more than one beneficiary on the deed, you may be forcing those people to own the property and they may not get along or may have different interests in the use of the property. And if they don't get along and don't see eye to eye, that could trigger a partition action, another form of, let's call it like a divorce relating to the property. So it's, it, it's a concern. It's not always the right decision. And again, contact your estate planning lawyer to see if a ladybird deed is the right deed for you. Let's take a deeper look also at this particular conveyance. 
You may be curious to know why it is even called a ladybird deed. It actually has a really fascinating history. This type of conveyance was used by President Johnson, Lyndon Johnson, to convey his real estate to his wife upon his death. And her name was Lady Bird, or her nickname was Lady Bird Johnson. Now it is understood that when that conveyance occurred, people weren't then calling this a Lady Bird deed. It actually started becoming a familiar or commonly used term because of a Florida attorney who incorporated into his elder law materials fictitious names to describe various types of conveyances. And he referred to this particular tr uh, transaction, what we call an enhanced life estate transfer, as a ladybird deed in honor of President Lyndon Johnson's conveyance to his wife. Before that, it was just simply called an enhanced life estate transfer. Let's take a closer look at how this applies under current Michigan law. A Lady Bird deed is a widely recognized effective estate planning deed. It's recognized under Michigan common law as well as under the Michigan land title standards, which are a group of standards that the title industry puts together so that the title industry can uh, have standards relating to how they view and underwrite particular deeds. And under standard 9.3, under the current sixth edition, there, this is a life estate, as I had mentioned, with a power to convey fee. Fee is the ownership interest, it's a legal term. And it says the holder of a life estate coupled with an absolute power to dispose of the fee, the real estate, by inter vivos, interesting life estate term, conveyance, can convey a fee simple interest during the lifetime of the holder. If the power is not exercised, the gift over becomes effective. That's the land title standard. Now let's go step by step by understanding the deed itself. The Lady Bird Deed is really an interesting document because in a traditional conveyance, you're used to seeing a grantor convey to a grantee, person A to person B. But notice here that the grantor is John Doe in this example, and they're quit claiming to the grantee, John Doe, person A to person A. So what makes this an enhanced life estate? It's this magic language. It talks about their rights under their lifetime, it says that it's intended to conform to the Michigan land title standard that we just referenced, and that at death, it's going to go to the beneficiary, in this case, Jane Smith. But remember, they can still convey out. So John Doe could convey out during John Doe's lifetime and prevent Jane Smith from ever receiving the real estate. As we work further down this document, it identifies, like any other deed, the city, the county, the legal description, the, the tax identification number, as well as the commonly known address. In this case, I have the language that talks about the consideration also included. Here, it talks about the exemption because it is within, uh, as we talked about, for uncapping purposes. Now again, I'm using this for illustration purposes. You have to consult with an experienced attorney to make sure that you, they guide you through this document. I don't want anyone to simply look at this document and assume you can just copy the language. Below is the signature line and under Michigan law, the notarization that is required. In addition, it talks about who's drafting it and where to return it after it's recorded, as well as where subsequent tax bills should go. This is what a Lady Bird deed is. So what do you do? How do you get one? How do you create one? At the Probate Pro, we're passionate about educating people about estate planning, Lady Bird deeds, probate related issues. If you have questions about a Lady Bird deed, if you'd like an example, more information about it, if you'd like us to draft you one, visit us at theprobatepro.com or call us at 1-833-PROBATE.